Hi everyone, welcome to the Tutor Med channel where medicine is simplified. I am Dr. Obin Frimpong and today let's look at how to calculate the corrected calcium level. This is particularly important to understand especially when dealing with a patient with a lab test indicating hypocalcemia. Is the patient truly hypocalcemic? or he has a low total serum calcium because his total serum albumin levels are also low? Let's find that out. And if you by any chance love what we are doing, don't forget to like and share this video, subscribe and hit your notification bell to see more contents like this. Now first things first, let's understand what total serum calcium means. The total serum calcium concentration is the addition of the ionized calcium which is the calcium ions which are freely circulating in blood not complex not bound to any plasma proteins plus those which are bound to albumin plus those which are complex to other anions like phosphate ions to form um, compounds like calcium phosphate and so hypocalcemia in terms of total serum calcium level, hypocalcemia is the total serum calcium concentration less than 8.8 mg per deciliter. And in terms of millimoles per liter, it should be less than 2.2 millimoles per liter in the presence of a normal plasma albumin level. Meaning, for you to say that a patient or for you to say that the total serum calcium concentration is below normal you need to ensure that the patient has a normal albumin first. As a patient with low albumin level may have a falsely low total serum calcium. And in terms of the serum ionized calcium level, hypocalcemia can be defined as serum ionized calcium concentration less than 4.7 mg per deciliter or in terms of millimole per liter, less than 1.17 millimoles per liter. Now, it should be taken note of that corrected calcium concentration is done on only the total serum calcium, not the serum ionized calcium. It means that if a lab reports a serum ionized calcium concentration and it's less than normal, that is in fact the true value. But if what you got was a total serum calcium level because albumin levels can affect the total serum calcium level you may have to calculate the corrected calcium concentration and so my point is that the corrected calcium calculation is done on total serum calcium not serum ionized calcium concentration good and so that being said it should be taking note of that ionized calcium remains the gold standard for assessing the calcium status of a patient. However, ionized calcium is not routinely performed because it is more costly and the sample taken must be handled carefully and stored under appropriate conditions to preserve a sample pH of 7.4 to be able to get an accurate report and this is according to up to date. It is also important to note that the affinity of calcium for albumin is increased in the presence of alkalosis. Thus, any alkalotic state may cause an acute decrease in ionized calcium. And so before you interpret this report, you should note that the patient who is in um, a state of alkalosis may have a falsely low calcium because calcium has a high affinity for albumin during alkalosis and so let's see how to calculate the corrected calcium concentration and this is usually done when there is hypoalbuminemia because remember that hypoalbuminemia can cause a falsely low calcium level or a falsely low total serum calcium concentration and so here is the rule the rule states that and there's a very popular formula used in clinical practice. The rule states that for every one gram per liter fall in albumin, the calcium rises by 0.02 in millimoles per liter. However, if you are looking at it in milligram per deciliter, the calcium should rise by 0.08. So I repeat the rule again. For every one gram per liter fall 
in serum albumin levels. In millimoles per liter, calcium should rise by 0.02 and in milligrams per deciliter, calcium should rise by 0.08. And so, we know the normal albumin level is 35 to 55 grams per liter. And so please keep this in mind as we'll be using this in our calculation. Or stated in grams per deciliter, the normal albumin level is from 3.5 to 5.5 gram per deciliter. But for convenience sake, I would like us to use the first unit, 35 to 55 grams per liter. Now I must mention that according to up to date, Despite the widespread use of this formula in clinical practice, more contemporary studies suggest the accuracy of this estimate is quite poor in a variety of populations. However, we still use it in clinical practice. And so let's see how to apply this formula in subsequent slides. Now let's see an example. Take a patient with total serum calcium concentration to minimals. And then we know our reference range to be between 2.2 to 2.6. By definition, this patient has a total serum calcium less than 2.2 and so we think he is hypocalcemic, isn't it? Remember that you cannot conclude on this by ignoring the serum albumin level. So we have to look at the serum albumin level. We check the serum albumin level and it is 26 gram per liter. The normal being between 35 to 55. And so here we have to calculate the corrected calcium level. Now if we are to use the lower limit of the albumin level, which is 35, you can see that here albumin has fallen by 9 grams per liter and so remember the rule the rule states that for every one gram per liter of albumin decrease the calcium level should rise by 0.02 millimoles per liter and so using this rule if every one gram gives a rise of 0.02 millimoles per liter sorry per liter i should have said then for this patient the calcium should rise by nine times 0.02 and that gives us 0.18 millimoles per liter and so for this patient the corrected calcium level would be what the lab gave us plus the correction and so that would be two millimoles that's what the lab gave us plus what we've corrected plus 0.18 millimoles and that would give us 2.18 millimoles per liter and that is still less than 2.2 millimoles per liter and so that would be considered as a true hypocalcemia although the albumin is reduced and so that is how to calculate the serum or the corrected calcium total calcium concentration now let's see another example this time in milligrams per dl take a patient whose total or total serum calcium level is 8.5 milligrams per dl and our reference range is 8.8 .8 to 10.5 milligrams per dl and so looking at this on face value this patient has um, a hypocalcemia because remember we defined it as less than 8.8 .8 milligrams per dl but we need to go and check the patient's serum albumin we check the patient's serum albumin and we have 30 grams per liter and we know the normal range is 35 to 55 and so this patient has hypoalbuminemia and hypoalbuminemia may have an impact on the total serum calcium concentration you are seeing and so we need to calculate the correction however if this patient had a normal albumin then the serum calcium you are seeing would be a true one and we do not need to correct anything and so let's correct this calcium level so remember for milligrams per dl for every one gram per liter decrease in albumin, calcium should rise by 0.08 milligrams per dl. And so if you look at this patient's albumin level, albumin has decreased by 5. And so the calcium should rise by 0.08 times 5. And that will be 0 0.4. And so if we want the corrected 
calcium level, that will be what the lab gave us, which is 8.5 plus what we've corrected, 0.4, and that comes to 8.9 milligrams per deciliter. And so, if you check this with the definition, you realize that this patient is actually not hypocalcemic. He is hypocalcemic because of a reduction in serum albumin. And so, the corrected calcium level is 8.9 and that is normal and so these are the two ways to calculate the corrected calcium level and so kindly take note of these um take home i mean summaries that corrected calcium level is only done on total serum calcium concentration however if your lab can do the ionized serum cal uh, calcium concentration that is the gold standard and that is what should be relied upon however if your total serum ca um, calcium is low you need to do the albumin to ensure that the patient has a normal albumin level before you can consider accepting that the patient is truly hypocalcemic and so thank you for watching this episode of tutor med please do not forget to like and share this video and subscribe to our channel see you in our next video and until then bye